Let's continue with the Doctrine ORM and talk about its Query Builder and DQL. We can create a Query Builder instance by calling create Query Builder method on the Entity Manager. Then we can call some fluent methods on the Query Builder to actually build the query. So let's build some simple query using the invoice entity. So will the Query Builder select and we'll select maybe created at and amount from invoice entity and we need to pass the alias here as the second argument so we'll set this to i and because we're using alias we need to add that to the selected properties here so we'll do i dot created at and i dot amount let's add some simple condition or where clause here so we'll do where i dot amount is greater than some amount we need to set this parameter so we'll do set parameter amount and let's hard code it for now to 100 and then we could set the type explicitly if we wanted to and pass the third argument but we don't need it in this case because type for certain values is automatically inferred let's put these on its own lines so it's easier to read and let's also add some sorting here so we'll add some order by clause so we'll do order by and we'll order by the created at date in descending order and then we need to execute the query because the query builder simply builds the object it does not actually execute the query we need to convert the query builder into a query object and to do that we can call the get query method so we'll do get query and here we can set this to query and then we can execute the query by calling get result method on the query object so if we type query and let the id autocomplete we see that we have some methods available so so we can run get result and assign this to invoices variable we could of course chain the get result method call after the get query method and set this to invoices but i just want to have the query as a separate variable now while this may look similar to the doctrine dbal's query builder that we covered before it's not the same notice that this is not the table name here and these are not the column names because in the table the created at is actually created underscore at in snake case so we are using the property on the invoice entity. If we go into the invoice entity, we see that the amount here and the created at are just the properties that are mapped to the columns on the table. So we are not really building or writing SQL here. We are building and writing something called DQL, which stands for Doctrine Query Language. And before you panic, it's not as scary as it may sound. DQL is similar to SQL, but unlike SQL where you think in terms of tables and columns, in DQL you think in terms of entities and mapped properties. We can actually inspect the DQL query and see what it is by calling the getDQL method on either the query object or the query builder. Let's open the terminal and run the code. And as you can see, we get DQL as a result. As you can see, we're selecting created at an amount properties from the invoice entity, and it's using the fully qualified class name here, where the amount is greater than amount, and we're ordering by created at in descending order. Now, this is a pretty simple DQL, but we could build complex queries as well. We can even write raw DQL, and instead of creating the query builder, we could create a query and pass the raw DQL there. So we could basically copy this and assume that we wrote this ourselves. Let's close this out. And instead of creating the query builder, what we can do is that we can create query here and do entity manager create query. And as you can see, it accepts a DQL string as an argument. So we can paste this DQL here and then we can get the result of that query. This gives us flexibility to write more complex queries from scratch. Now let's get rid of this for now since we're not going to be writing DQL from scratch and let's actually var dump the invoices. I'm going to comment this out here and let's var dump invoices. Let's open the terminal, run the code, and as you can see, we're getting list of invoices where the amount is greater than 100, and each invoice element contains two pieces of data created at an amount. Now, as you probably noticed, the result is an array. It's not objects or entities. It's just a simple array that contains list of invoices where each element is just another array containing the items that we're selecting. The reason this works like this is because the way select clause is composed. So basically this line here has effect on how the data is fetched in addition to you being able to fetch data in certain way by calling methods. But since we are being specific here, 
here and we're specifying the properties like created at an amount it's not hydrating the entity objects but instead returning an array containing those fields as values and this kind of makes sense because if this were to select an entity object an invoice entity it would only hydrate two properties on it created at an amount and it would not make sense for the invoice entity object to work that way because we have a bunch of other properties that are mapped to the columns and if we're only selecting amount and created at it does not make sense to hydrate an entire entity object that's why we're getting a result as an array to work with entities we can get rid of the specifics here and simply select the alias here so we'll remove this and let's open the terminal clear this out run the code again and as you can see now we're getting entity objects now this is not readable so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to add the simple for each loop here for each invoices as invoice and let's echo out the created at property and we'll format this this way let's also get amount and the status of the invoice so we'll do invoice get amount and invoice get status and we can call to string on it because the result will be invoice status enum now let's clean this up a little bit and this should be good enough i'm going to add a doc block here that this is an invoice entity so that way the auto completion works and we can click into these methods let's run the code now and as you can see it works this means that now we are working with hydrated entities hydration simply put is a process that converts database results into objects or entities it basically is a process of filling or loading an object with data if we inspect the get result method here we see that the hydration mode by default is set to hydrate object we can change that and hydrate result as an array if we wanted to or we can simply call another method called get array result which passes as you can see hydrate array as an argument so instead of get result we can call get array result and now let's var dump invoices because this loop will no longer work since we are no longer working with entities so i'm going to comment this out for now let's open the terminal run the code and as you can see we're back to arrays but now array contains more information for each invoice because these are the properties that are mapped to the columns on the entity now let's close this out and let's inspect some of these methods here like select from and where i'm going to inspect the select method this method as you can see calls another method called add and the first argument it passes is select and second argument it passes is some kind of expression object let's inspect the from now and here again we're calling the add method passing from as the first argument and again it's creating some expression object let's inspect where and this again calls the add method with the where as the first argument and an expression object which it creates right here so basically these expression objects or expressions are ways to build more complex queries and more complex conditions it actually makes building complex queries and conditions more flexible and not that complex this add method here is responsible for building the dql if we inspect that method we see that it accepts three arguments dql part name dql part and append flag the first argument dql part name is the position or where the dql part has to be placed so as we saw in the select from and where it's just like a string where the dql part should go it can be select where from group by and so on the second argument is pretty obvious and it's the dql part it can be passed as a string as an array or an expression object the third argument is the optional append flag it basically decides if it should override the previously defined items in the dql or not note that where and having parts always overrides so this flag has no effect on those we can see that in the first part of this method it throws an exception if the append is set to true and the part name is either where or having so let's say that we want to build a query with the following where clause where amount is greater than some amount which is what we already have and status is equal to some status or created at is greater than or equal to some date and we'll put this in parentheses so this is not that complex but let's try to build that with the query builder now you might think that calling where multiple times would append to the query and that's not going to work because where always overrides so if we set this to something like i status equals to some status 
this is going to overwrite this and if we actually echo the dql here and let's exit let's run the code we see that we only have a single where clause so we cannot use multiple where method calls in this way the other option is that doctrine actually has methods called end where and or where that we could try and use so for example we could do end where in this case and let's run the code and sure enough now we have that end now let's add or where here and we'll do i created at greater than or equal to some date and we also need to set the parameters so we'll set the status to invoice status paid and then we'll set the date to march 25th let's run the code again and this is the where that it generated i'm going to copy this and put it right here so we can compare it as you can see it's not quite the same what we actually wanted we wanted the parentheses to be around the or condition here but instead it put the parentheses around the end condition so this and this are not the same query and it could cause some nasty bugs so to fix this and to generate this kind of query what we can do is that instead of using end where and or where here we can build our custom where expression so we're going to comment these two parts out here and instead of doing the where this way we're going to pass a custom expression. We can build expressions by calling the method on the query builder. So we'll do query builder expr. And then if we do the autocomplete, we see that it has a bunch of helper methods that we could use to build our custom or complex expression. For the first part, we need the end. So we'll do end x. And this method accepts list of expressions as arguments. So we need to build this part and this part's of the expression so we'll again try to build the expression and we'll do greater than and pass i amount as the first argument and the amount parameter as the second we can then put a comma and continue building our expression now we need to build this part as you can see this itself has an or condition here so we need to again do something similar like we did here but instead of end x we need to call or x so we'll copy this put it here and do or x and within the parentheses, we need to now pass this condition and this. So again, we'll do something like this. And instead of greater than, it will be equals and i status equals some kind of status and for the second part it will be greater than or equal to so we'll do greater than or equal to and we'll change this to created at and this to date. Now let's get rid of this and we also need to get the value here to pass for the status. So let's open the terminal, run the code and as you can see now the where clause looks correct. We can copy this, put it right under here and as you can see it is identical. The only difference is that I use the column name here but here we have a property name because it's a DQL. Now let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this and let's try to get the results. I'm going to replace this to get result we'll get rid of the var dump let's uncomment this let's run the code and as you can see it works and we're getting a single invoice because that's the only invoice that qualifies for these checks if we open the invoices table here we see that we only have two invoices that are greater than 100 and out of both only one is paid and only one qualifies the date check if we change this to march 26 for example and update it and then we run the code we see that now we're getting two invoices. So everything works as expected. Now this is very cool stuff, right? We could even build a custom query builder that wraps around the doctrines query builder and makes use of expressions to build up complex queries using fluent methods so that we don't have to write too much manual expressions like this. Let's do one more example where we select related items. So we can call the join method here and as the first argument we need to pass in the name of the relation or the association if we inspect the invoice entity we see that the name is items so we can do i dot items and the second argument is the alias so we'll put it for now then within the select we can also select the items so we'll do it here and now it should select the invoice items as well so let's go down here and var dump the get array result and let's add the exit statement let's clear this out run the code and as you can see each invoice along with its properties it also contains the related properties called items which contains the properties of the invoice item entity if we wanted to select only some parts from the invoice items we could do that by specifying the properties here 
So we can do it.description, for example. Let's run the code again. And as you can see, we're only getting the description. Now, if we wanted to work with entities, it would, of course, work as well. So let's get rid of this here. And then within the loop, I'm going to paste in a little snippet to print some item information. So as you can see, we're iterating over each item and we're printing the description, quantity and unit price. Let's open the terminal, clear this out, run the code. And as you can see, it works as expected. In addition to query building abilities, we can also call connection methods on entity manager like begin transaction, commit and rollback. So for example, if we scroll up here, we can do something like entity manager, get connection, and then call begin transaction or transactional commit roll back and so on or we can call the transaction related methods directly on the entity manager so we can do begin transaction commit roll back or instead of transactional it will be wrap in transaction and wrap the block of code within the transaction we could also run native sql queries if we wanted to instead of building dql or writing raw dql so instead of calling create query builder we can call a method called create native query and pass the SQL string as the first argument and then pass the result set mapping as the second argument. We're not going to have the time to cover everything that Doctrine ORM or DQL has to offer like running update and delete queries, caching, repositories, more complex queries and so on. Which is why I highly encourage and recommend you to check the documentation if you want to learn and know more about Doctrine in general. As always I'm going to leave the necessary links in the description. The main purpose of covering doctrine in this series was to introduce you to ORMs and some of the high level abstraction stuff that you will come across in the frameworks. If you wish to see a full tutorial or a course on doctrine, drop a comment below and if there is enough demand, I might add it to my list. One thing that I do want to cover is the lifecycle events. Lifecycle events are basically events that trigger before or after something happens. This something can be the state of an entity change. For example, an event can be triggered before persist, after persist, before and after remove, or before and after flash, and so on. This allows us to hook into these events and provide custom listeners to do certain things. Doctrine's event system is controlled by event manager class, which is kind of similar to entity manager. It's like a central point that controls events. If we look at the documentation, we can see that we can create custom event classes and dispatch them using the event manager. If we scroll down a little bit more, we see that we could register the event listeners and event subscribers. These are the classes that basically get notified when certain events happen. When it comes to entities, there are some lifecycle callback methods that we can create as shown in the table here. They are automatically dispatched whenever the certain events happen, like pre-persist happens on initial persist call, post-persist triggers on flush, and so on. So let's open the invoice entity class and see how we can use the lifecycle methods. We have this created at property that is mapped to created at column in the table. It's kind of like a timestamp where we want to set current date and time when invoice is created. As you might remember in the last lesson, we had this example where we were creating an invoice entity with the items and we were setting the created at property manually by calling this method here and we were setting it to the current date time. Now what if we wanted to automate this and not set this manually? What if we just get rid of this and have the invoice automatically set the created at time right before it's created? So if we go here, we want to basically hook into one of the lifecycle methods called pre-persist. So we can add some kind of method here called on pre persist and this method gets lifecycle event args as an argument and within here we're going to set the created at this way so we'll do this created at equals new date time now we can get rid of the set created at method because we no longer need that and we also need to add the attribute here that this triggers on pre persist so we'll add pre persist attribute we also need to add an attribute to the entity class to mark it that it has lifecycle callbacks. So let's open the terminal now and let's test this out. We'll run the code. So let's open the invoices table, refresh, and sure enough, the invoice was created and the created at was automatically set. So this is it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoy my content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. If you have any questions or feedback, post the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you next time.